Good afternoon and welcome to BDTV. Um, it's a usual format today, 20 minutes, um, very informal discussion, talking to a leader in business development from professional services. And today we're really pleased to have with us Richard Crook from Safri Champness. Welcome along, Richard. Thank you, Peter. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, good, so thank you. good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Uh, R Richard, uh, when we were when we were having a chat ahead of this, he, he described himself uh, in, in in a really memorable way as being a, a professional services triathlete, having worked across um, across property, law, and and accountancy. So, so my first first opening question to you today, Richard, is what 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 are the good and bad bits of each, really? Yeah, I mean, firstly. I'd just like to say it's, it's it's nice to be referred to as a triathlete in any way these days. So uh, it might just happens to be professional services marketing, of course. So, um, <clears throat> well, I mean, good question. It's sort of nearly thirty years of working in professional services marketing now, and as you say, <clears throat> you know, I've completed the journey in working in all three, and uh, there were good and bad points, uh, as you can imagine, in all of them. Mm. Um, but they're also quite different in many ways. Um, the one sort of universal trend, though, is that generally we are still targeting pretty much the same audiences, whether you're real estate, legal, uh, you know, or accountancy. Uh, the, the sectors that we target are pretty much the same. We're still selling our, our knowledge, aren't we, and our expertise and our people. Yeah. It's just that our services that are slightly different. Um, uh, good and bad on each it's difficult I don't know who's on the call and if I've got any of my ex-colleagues or something on here yeah, I, I think you do actually I think okay. you do. <laughs> thank you um, real estate I would say um, and I think also accountancy you, you're very much seen as a, a trusted advisor you are a professional yourselves uh, generally we've got degrees in marketing postgraduates masters etc so we are all experts in uh, in our areas of specialism, mm -hmm. real estate, uh, and you are still treated the same in legal. The difference with legal, I think, is that it's very detail orientated, as you could imagine. You know, lawyers are highly intelligent people. I'm not saying for a minute that real estate and accountancy people aren't, but lawyers are very much into the detail, and mm -hmm. I think sometimes strategy implementation of our, our sort of marketing and BD plans can can take longer. Uh, you still get there, but sometimes the journey and process isn't the same. Uh, I mean, real estate, a fairly obvious trend, I'd say, is it's probably more of a face-to-face -face, yes. um, services industry. Um, <clears throat> and you see, so do you think that, do you think they, as a result, felt it harder during the, during the pandemic? Was it yeah, I think so. Um, you, you have big real estate jamborees don't you in the in the property world like MIPIM and MAPIC and there, there just isn't anything similar in the accountancy yeah. legal world where you get 20 to 50,000 sector specialists together in one city uh, for a five-day conference um, and interestingly I, I think the sort of the working patterns during lockdown reflected that so real estate for example were very much about still having the marketing BD teams in the office. Yes. Um, I wouldn't say, certainly the firms I've worked in, it wasn't mandated, but I know that there were firms where the expectation was that you were still expected to be in the office in those breaks between lockdown, uh, generally three to five days a week. Oh, wow. that, and that, you know, that seems to be less so in accountancy and the, the legal sector. Yeah. I mean, yeah. where we are here, I think it's the perfect mix. You're expected to do a minimum of two days a week in the office. You can be flexible about those days and even your working hours. And you know, our profession, just like lots of professions at the moment, you know, there is a war in, on talent. And you need to show that you're, you are flexible and you are agile because if you want to recruit the best people, that's almost like table entry stakes now that you offer that flexibility. Yeah. Do, do you think that will mean a bit of a bit of a flow for, out of out of law into others? Um, 
No, I'm not. No, I'm not sure it will because I think lots of I don't know many people actually that have worked in the three sectors. Yeah. So uh, I think that people will probably stay in the sectors um, where their experience is. But what they might do is look for firms that are offering more flexibility. Uh, yeah. I, I remember in my last role, someone left and they went uh, to take a business development manager role in a, a competing firm. And that particular role was, was fully remote, five days a week working mm-hmm. from home just occasionally expected to come into the office now maybe i'm a little bit old school and it's a generational thing i think it's very difficult for us as marketing and bd professionals to do our job five days a week from home i think it's important that we are still in the office and we meet our we meet our team and our colleagues and you build up that camaraderie and uh, we we tend to try and make sure we're all in on a Thursday, for example, yeah. which we call our surge day where we get most of the marketing and BD team in. I'm not sure yeah. if that's got anything to do with thirsty Thursdays as well as a theme, <laughs> uh, but it does seem to be the most popular day. So even, even if you wake up and have breakfast at near Anfield, you're, you're willing to trip down to the office for the day. Well, exactly. I mean, what, <laughs> what's a perfect day that would be. <laughs> <laughs> and I, um, Tuesday this week, I was in, I was in in London, and yesterday up in up in Cheltenham with 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 clients, and certainly the the city and the trains and the motorways seem seem to be much busier than 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 I've seen since since March twenty twenty. Um, are you experiencing that? And 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 is it you know is it welcome? You you say you're a little bit old school. What what are you getting from people being back in the office that, that you weren't having in the in the months prior? Yeah. Well, firstly, I concur completely that um, it's getting busier again with people back into the office. Um, Trains are busier, station car parks as busy as it was. Um, And you you sense that vibe in the office again. What do you get out of being in the office? Well, firstly, you get to do less endless Zoom and Teams calls. You can actually have face-to-face meetings again, which... Uh, I think it's priceless for all of us. Secondly, I think you actually get less email traffic. And the reason why is you bump into people in the office, and water cooler moments, coffee machine, photocopy, and you have that conversation where, oh, I want to go and speak to you about something. And you action it there, like the old-fashioned way, how we used to do things rather yeah. than the stream of emails because you're not seeing people as much. Mm. And the main thing is you just, you build up that camaraderie again with your team. It, it's, it's so important. Yeah. And also with uh, the fee earners and the clients that we serve. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Now, now if, if we may, may come back, come back to your change and you've been, you know, you've been bold enough to move while, while we were still in, a, in very much in a, you know, early hybrid phase and, and, and to move, I know you did. You did a year in in Deloitte much earlier in your career, but re- really to go into um, quite a fresh challenge at Safaris. What's what's the attraction there? What what lies ahead, and what's the opportunity? Um, well, firstly, I was lucky that Safari Chapman's is a firm that I had known for a long time. Uh, a very close professional relationship with Charles Russell Speechley, okay. uh, where I used to work. So two very esteemed, um, predominantly seen as, as private wealth, private client, mm. professional services mm. firms. So there was always a synergy. Um, the attraction for me with Safri Champness was that actually there's so much more to the firm than actually the market possibly realises. Um, they are a traditional uh, accountancy firm with a heritage in um landed estates and rural and private client etc but we're also a phenomenal business in sort of the corporate transactional sports entertainment world yeah um we look yeah, you've after, got some really exciting clients don't you we've got some amazing clients mm. um I, I can't name names for example but I, we represent something like 75 percent of the premiership footballers right. um lots of um we we represent a particularly uh, dominant 
British Formula One driver, for example. Okay. Um, you know, but also big clients that maybe the market don't really expect us to have. So clients yes. like, you know, like Disney and uh, Spotify, uh, Apple. You know, there's wow. lots of TV, um, <clears throat> film studios, etc. Yes. So, yes. You know, so my challenge really was, I think it's a fantastic business. And I don't think the firm would mind if I say, you know, part of the challenge here is to modernize the firm. Yeah. You know, often you take a new role and your challenge is, well, how do I change the brand perception of the firm to what we want to be seen as? Whereas our challenge here actually is really to, to get the brand and positioning to actually reflect the business that we already are. And in, yeah. and in many yeah. ways, that's actually a lot easier. Um, and, and a more enjoyable challenge. Yes, yeah. So, it, so it's uh, not not hiding your light under the bushel. It's, uh, and they, they, you know, they must have done fantastically well with that perception to have won some of those, you know, some of those landmark clients and some of those landmark names. Clearly, clearly, word of mouth and reputation was was working well. So, what 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 do you plan to change? Is it is it about bringing in uh, new bits of marketing technology? Is it about a change of attitude and behavior across the partnership yeah i mean i think there's lots of things there firstly a, a more client-centric culture probably across the partnership okay. um we are fiercely loyal with our clients and our our clients are, are very loyal with us um <clears throat> but we maybe we are a little bit shy and lacking in confidence and actually telling the rest of the world who our clients are so okay. I think we want to be on the front foot a little bit more with our marketing. Yes. We probably want to push the digital first strategy even further than the firm has. Exciting projects. I watch this space. We're looking at things like a, a rebrand of the company and a, yeah. a change of the company name. Oh, We're wow. looking at oh, yeah. Yeah, some exciting yeah. projects coming yeah. down the line. Yeah. Um, and we have one or two antiquated systems yeah. Um, and these days we're looking so much into the whole marketing automation piece mm. um, so we're looking at bringing products in like Passel and Hootsuite and uh, there'll be a CRM project coming down the line all of these things I'm sure many of uh, the people listening today will have been using these tools or will be looking at them themselves mm -hmm. yeah yeah indeed the people listening today and people that will be watching the recording of this, if, if you are watching on YouTube, predominantly leading marketing and, and BD function. I'm, I'm with some, some firm leaders and divisional heads in, in, a, in amongst that. Either we, we, we've seen and it's been well documented that over the last two years, some, some sectors have, have really gone through the roof and others, others have been floored. Is there, are you going to be looking at things on, on, to that to that level of detail about where where the firm's pointing, what sectors it's investing in more heavily? Yeah, clearly uh, we're looking at where growth sectors have been. Um, you know, so even in accountancy, looking at things like cloud accountancy, looking at things like crypto. Yeah. Uh, you know, everyone's doing the same, looking at where there are opportunities. And you know, thinking back to when I was in you know, real estate, Lots of people thought the real estate industry would really struggle uh, you know, post-COVID, people yes. working at home. Do businesses need as much uh, office space and floor space as, as previously? Well, actually, all that uncertainty creates market demand because firms probably are looking for more flexible space, um, which actually means that it keeps the cycle going of demand for office space, for example. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's still plenty of opportunity, even um, after everything that we've been through. The, the yeah. key is to try and get there one step ahead of the competition, as always. Yes, yes. And how do you... <laughs> and I, this, this is a big question. We haven't prepared for it, so f feel free to pass on this one. But how do you avoid throwing the, the baby out with the bath water? If, you know, if, 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 if Safri's already has this... Um, excellent reputation with the people that know it uh and you've, you know you've got the 75 percent of the premiership and some of those leading uh, you know world-class media titles that, that you've talked about mm. how, how can you 
how can you ensure that 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 the values that have got you there are sacrosanct whilst at the same time freshening things up and, and, and bringing in a new approach? Yeah. I mean, firstly, the values of the firm uh, are, are genuinely, utterly embraced in this business, um, probably more so than a lot of places that I've worked. I think people really do believe in the values of the what, business. What sort of values are those? I mean, oh, anything distinct <laughs> distinct from other uh, competitors? No, we all tend to be a little bit vanilla, actually, don't we, in terms of our <laughs> core values about being collegiate and collaborative and enthusiastic. Um, client service and excellence. Um, I don't think there's anything there that would be um, too enlightening for people other than to say that we, we do genuinely follow them as a business. Okay. And the answer to what you said is that we're not trying to change the way we deal with our clients and how we interact with them. We still offer client service and excellence, we're very much a people's firm in the, the way we deal with our clients and partner-led in the terms of partners lead a, a lot of the clients and transactions here and when they yeah. build their client portfolios um, <clears throat> I think there's just an acknowledgement that we market ourselves to a vast uh, a range of sectors and, and a, a, a vast range of services that we offer you can do it in a slightly different way yeah. you market yourself slightly differently to the, the, the private wealth heritage history part of the firm where our our great foundations were built, but then you can market yourself in a very different way mm. when you're marketing to sports or entertainment or entrepreneurs or corporates, M and A work, etc. And when you talked about when you talked about digital first earlier, is that is that in in terms of service delivery or is that in terms of how you how you're promoting the firm? Um, I think it's it's both. Okay. Uh, it's certainly the way we're all promoting our firms, we, we were all well advanced in the digital journey before COVID. Mm. Uh, every firm I've worked for, I would say, has genuinely had a, a digital first strategy. I think it probably just everything was accelerated. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think very many of us were doing hybrid events and things, for example. Um, <clears throat> we were probably all doing some online seminars, but we, it, we certainly weren't doing the mixtures. Um, so lots of things were accelerated over that uh, over that period, and then also lots of our clients are at home more, yeah. and there's lots of uh, apps and cloud accounting apps and things, and you know, we need to make sure we're in tune with the demands of our you know, our clients uh, in terms of how they, <clears throat> they want to do their tax returns and apps and things that they use. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, we have to keep abreast with things that are changing in the industry and have, have we got far enough yet that you can see we, we talked about um you know your your colleagues and their desire to be in the office and, and embracing that flexibility are you seeing that yet with clients have we uh, has there been any sort of proven patterns about who wants to come in and see people face to face and who's happy to do it all remotely i don't think there's a, a general trend um I mean, possibly some of our more traditional clients in the in the private wealth space uh, actually do still prefer face to face meetings. They do like to come in and meet their professional advisors, uh, and they and they want to have a proper face to face meeting. Maybe some of our bigger corporate clients actually uh, are happier to have uh, Zoom and Teams and Skype calls. Yes. Um, but it's not completely bad. It's, it's not completely, yeah. but I, I think there probably is a trend that way. Yes. 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 No, that that really interesting to hear. That. That's that's exactly what we expected, Richard. You to be open and honest and, and and sharing your sharing your thoughts and your your unique perspective, looking across those those three bits. Something we always ask people when when they do when they do come on is what they're looking forward to. Now that now that they. Um, uh, you know, uh, the government has arguably um, uh, reclassified COVID, and things do seem to be things do seem to be opening up again. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can make a guess what you're looking forward to on the 
in a sporting arena. Well, but, I'm looking uh, forward to Liverpool's quadruple, Peter. <laughs> okay. And what what would be the what would be the 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 corporate equivalent of that then? What, the what corporate the, equivalent? What's the well, European a personal part? equivalent is I'm looking forward to going on holiday abroad again. I think yes. that's probably something a lot of us have missed yeah, uh, yeah. over the over the last three years. Yes. And on a corporate equivalent, it, yeah, it's just great to reconnect with with colleagues and peers again. And, yeah. You know, be back in London and embracing what a fantastic city it is. Yeah, yeah, it really, it really is. I, 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 as I said, I was in on Tuesday for the first time in a couple of weeks, and it was you just you just leave with a new sense of energy and optimism about uh, about the world. So, Richard, you, you're leaving us with, with with some of that today. Thanks for thanks for shooting from the hip. Thanks for being so uh, so open and honest with us. Absolute pleasure to pleasure. talk with you. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Cheers. Okay.